All right, imagine that we review some daily report here. And these are transactions apparently, and they have different statuses, decline, successful, pending. And we also have some imaginary VIP conditions here. So if someone has made a successful payment, and if its value is less than or equal to 999, then this should classify to normal. And then if it's between a thousand and a thousand and nine hundred ninety nine should be bronze, etc. But if the payment is not successful, meaning if it's declined or pending, then in column F here we should output this string here call the customer. So maybe we will contact the customer and ask them to try again. Now I believe we haven't mentioned one thing in this course so far and it is how to check if one value is not equal or is different to another value. Now generally there are two ways to achieve this. And uh, one way is by using the function not. And as it's written here, it changes false to true or true to false. So when I open parentheses, it only has one argument and it's a logical condition. So let's check if so E2, which is declined, if this is equal to the string successful. Apparently this should return false, but because we are nesting this inside a not function, Excel will change it to true. So this is one option and another option, of course, we can use this less than or greater than symbols together. So for instance, again, we can ask whether cell E2 is different than the string successful. And in such case, Excel returns true. So you can pause the video now and try to write a formula that will apply all these conditions or you can carry on watching and we will write this together. All right, so let's go. I have selected cell F2 and directly in the formula bar, I will start writing the if condition, the if function, of course, and the logical test. The first thing I would like to check is the status of the payment, right? So I will check whether the value of cell E2 is not successful. And if this is true, then we will have the string call the customer. And then if the value is false, we will have to nest some if functions. So if it's false, meaning so E2 or E3 or whatever is successful, then first I would like to check if the value in cell C2 is less than or equal to 999. So another if function here, and this time the logical test will be C2 is less than or equal to 999. Or actually, you know what? I will, instead of hard coding here, I will make reference to the values in cell I. So here I will make a reference to cell I4. So this is my logical test. And if this is true, then I want the value in cell J4, right? So J4, comma. Now, if this is not true, then apparently I will want to nest another if function here and this time the condition will be whether the value in cell c2 is less than or equal to this next value here right so this is cell i5 comma and if this is true then we should get this value here which is in cell j5 comma and if this is false then we should nest another if function here and check if the value in cell C2 is less than or equal to I6. And if this is true, we will have the value in cell J6. And if it is false, another if function 
and this time we will check whether the value in cell C2 is less than or equal to I7, comma, in such case let's get the value of cell J7, comma, and in any other case I would like to get the value of cell J8. So here I will type in J8 and close this nested if function and then the one before this and I believe I will have to close a few more of the parentheses a few more times. So now we click enter and Excel returns call the customer. Now if I simply make a double click here to apply the same formula for the other cells, I will get unexpect unexpected results. And this is so because I hope you remember that by default Excel uses relative references. Now in other words we had here in cell F2 we are referencing cell E2 and C2 and then in cell F3, Excel has changed this to E3 and C3 and so on. And it has also changed the, the references to the cells in columns I and J. So now the question is, when we start dragging this formula down, do we want Excel to change the references of columns E and C? Well, apparently the answer is yes because we want to evaluate the statuses and the amounts. But then if we ask the question, when we start dragging the formula down, do we want Excel to change the references to the, to cells, to the cells in columns I and J? Well, here the answer is no. And therefore we will have to change to switch to using absolute references in our function here. So anywhere we have referenced i and j, this, we should switch this to absolute reference. So I hope you remember how to do this. And in the formula bar here, we have to click with the cursor and simply click F4. Now, one thing is for sure we need to lock the row. Now it's not mandatory to lock the column because I don't plan to copy this formula to the right side. So the dollar sign should absolutely be in front of, of, of the row, but it doesn't change if we, it's not a mistake if we leave it like that. So I will click F4 here and here and also here and here and also for cells i6 and g6 and a few more times so if i now click if i now make a double click here i believe the references will be good and we can check for instance in cell f8 we have platinum i believe this is correct because we have a transaction amount of 6360 which is successful so this covers our condition and then for instance in cell F10 even though the transaction is between 3500 and 4999 we have called the customer because this is with with status declined so this was an example of using uh, nested if functions. I don't think it was a very difficult example, but it wasn't a very easy one. All right, let's review one more example in this section.